James O'Brien on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 11.49 is the time. I thought we might take a little Brexit interlude because I know that this is why you really tune into the programme to find out what, what the latest is. So um, I, in, in a moment I'll introduce you to the Deputy Editor of Progress, Connor Pope, who is part of a, a process that's designed to see the Labour leadership become a little more reflective of the views of... Labour voters. Um, the latest polling has about 82% of Labour members supporting a referendum on the terms of Britain's departure, with about 87% saying that Britain should stay in the single market, uh, a position that is not yet reflected by the leadership. Um, before that, I, I just, uh, in, in the interest of sort of pithy little slogans and what have you, I thought I'd just give you my views. On, on where the debate is today, because this is where I told you it was going to end up, and it hasn't ended up here completely yet, but it is, I, I think, fair to say that what you will hear in the coming weeks is this. Why didn't those people, we derided as condescending liars, traitors, experts, elites and idiots, come up with a plan for the expensive, complicated Brexit that we insisted would be free and easy? It's all their fault. We still haven't got a plan. Um, that would be your latest position by prominent Brexiters. The latest position on Brexit in general is it's now time to blame the people who've been patiently explaining for two years that it would all be a blooming mess for the fact that it's all a blooming mess. On no account, fellow Brexiters, should you blame all the people who've been ignorantly insisting that everything would be just dandy. Blame the people who said that this was inevitable for the fact that it's now happened. Don't blame the people who swore blind that everything would be fine. Connor, sorry. You weren't, you weren't, <laughs> you weren't expecting to have that inflicted upon you as you seated yourself in the studio. Um, tell me what you're up to. This is a desire to see the Labour Party conference in Liverpool in September mm. reflect, I think it's fair to say, more accurately, the feelings of the Labour Party membership. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a new campaign that's been launched called LabourSay.eu. It's a campaign launched by the centre-left candidates for Labour's NEC, which is the party's governing body, to try and give uh, members a meaningful say on Brexit at conference this year. Uh, it's been a couple of years since members have been able to have a say at conference. It's been stopped at the Scottish Labour conference and at the annual conference the year before that. And so this is actually about, this is going to be the last time probably we're going to have a say before Brexit happens. And given the way that the Parliament is at the moment, uh, it's really important that... Labour does listen to its members. It, it, just clarify for me whether or not you're all part of the same movement or whether there are two or three different movements, because it, it has anti-Brexit uh, mobilisation in the Labour Party. has been a tiny bit people's front of Judea over the last couple of years. So we've got the five MPs who wrote to the newspapers this week from the north-east of England with big, big, big leave votes, mm. but they've now crunched the numbers and decided that they cannot stand idly by while they're... Um, constituents are led into utterly unnecessary financial difficulties. So there's them. That's, mm -hmm. that's uh, I got their name somewhere, but there's five MPs from the North East. Then you've got the People's Vote, which Chukaramuna is heavily involved in. And now we've got your proposal. Are, are they all linked or...? Uh, well, listen, the... Um... <laughs> Um, Splitters. <laughs> no, it's not about one big group representing right. everyone. It's the fact that, actually, this shows quite how broad the level of support is. It's not one group that's trying to dominate it, that's trying to get its own agenda. But they're all, actually, you're all aiming for the same thing. You all want a, a, a second referendum, effectively. Well, we want to give Labour members a say at conference. Oh, okay. and whether that is on whether our policy is the single market or a final vote on the final Brexit deal, I'm, I'm kind of in favour of both of those things. Yes. But that... Necessarily, that is not what we're calling for. We're just calling for Labour members to actually be able to say what they want it to be. Um, how steep is the mountain? You'll forgive me for not being fully clued on, on how big a task you've set yourself, mm. but, but is there genuine resistance to the idea of a vote on Brexit policy at Conference 2018? It does seem so, but actually... From the leadership? Yeah, but I, th I think actually if you look at the... Um, uh, general election last year, that is the only time that the British public have had a say on how Brexit is going since the referendum in 2016. And I think the big uh, result that we got from that was that they're not pretty happy with the way that things are going under the Tories. And what the Tories have chosen to do is double down and go even harder on a hard Brexit. And in the past few months, what we've seen Jeremy Corbyn do is change his policy on the customs union. And this week at PMQs, he was absolutely brilliant. It was one of the best PMQs I think he's had since becoming leader because he went in hard on the customs union and showed that there was some water between Labour and the Tory party. 
It, it, I mean, you obviously that's a positive analysis that it, it, there, there were plenty of right wing journalists who felt that Corbyn won six nil this week at PMQ. Yeah. But, but but that was only because he's not in power. So the divisions and the confusion within his own party is less relevant than the divisions and confusion. But in you the said yourself that eighty seven percent of Labour members support staying in the single market. Yeah, well, Jeremy Corbyn currently doesn't. Well, uh, across the Labour movement as a whole, yeah. actually, it's remarkably united. If you look at the tra uh, the TUC, the trade unions. They are all in favour, essentially, of staying in the single market. And I think just before Labour conference in September will be the TUC conference. And I think they're likely to show that they're going to back this position as well pretty strongly in the final months leading up to March 2019 when we're set to leave the European Union. Yes. So, actually, I think maybe the people who are trying to constrict Jeremy Corbyn with this policy of triangulation on Brexit actually need to just let him be the voice of the Labour movement because what we've seen this week is that's when he's best. So you're confident that if he is allowed to just be the voice of the Labour movement then he will end up being little more than a, than a, 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 a loud hailer for the membership's views rather than clinging to his own historical views on the issue, which are a lot closer to Tony Benz than they are to, for example, Chukra Munoz. I think Jeremy Corbyn's popularity, starting from when he won the first mm. Labour leadership contest in 2015, has been exactly that he said he will represent the views of members, that he does want to give members a bigger say in things. So why, I think why it's do you conspicuous. Think he hasn't so quicker? Why do you think he hasn't come out? Uh, why doesn't he currently reflect the 87% figure? I, th I think there is um, some hesitancy because of, as you say, this old Benite you're yeah. a sceptic view that exists a lot around the top of the, the party and the leadership. But that comes into collision course with actually what the members feel. And actually, if we're talking about building a better and bigger and more democratic party, then Brexit is absolutely going to be the big issue of the next year. So you do have to give members a say, I think. Well, I, I mean, I agree with you. I just don't know that the, that the leader does. But clearly, <laughs> well, but clearly he's changed his position already on the customs union in the past few months. So I've seen, I think we've seen a bit of movement and we've seen how effective that can be. And I think when he reflects on how well he did at PMQs this week, he might think, actually, this is really working. And to get into power, I, I think it's probably going to be best if I reflect the views of my members. So, I, I, I mean, from the point of view of leavers who obviously have magnificent powers of, of, of revisionism, 35% <laughs> of people who voted to leave the European Union thought it would involve leaving the single market. That was, that mm. was the, the, the only really available polling that came immediately after the result. Today, of course, they all pretend that they knew exactly what they were voting for, and um, of course, yeah. just because they can't currently explain what it is they were voting for doesn't mean that they're not 100% certain that that is that thing they can't describe is exactly what they voted for. They will say... Um, the country voted to leave the European Union, and if we stay in the single market and the customs union, we won't really have voted to have let. We won't really have reflected that vote. Yeah, but me and you both know that's complete rubbish. Yeah, but I'm trying to speak up for them because no one else does. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the most powerful newspapers in the country and half of the broadcasting royalty. Well, effectively, the hard Brexiters who are kind of trying to keep Theresa May hostage are saying that everything that they believe, their most kind of extreme views on Brexit, is what represents the voice of the people. I'm sorry, but that is not what the result of the general election last year said. The, what the result there said was that actually people are really not happy with the way it's going. And the idea that you would double down on it is ridiculous. Yeah. And so maybe people should have another say on actually what they think and how they think it's going. So how do people get involved? They can go to laboursay.eu. You can sign up there, sign the petition to put some pressure to make sure that people do get a say at Labour Party conference. And you can find out more there. You can share motions. And if you're a Labour Party member, take a motion to your local constituency Labour Party meeting and make sure it's debated locally as well. Do you not... I mean, I know you, you'd be very expertly batted away my, my light-hearted criticism, but it would be better if you were all on the same bus, wouldn't it? If, if, if people's vote and Labour's say and the five MPs who wrote to the newspapers this week were all actually united. We are all united. We're all in the Labour Party. Well, OK, but there's plenty of people in the... Kate Hoey's in the Labour Party as well, mate. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to get away with that as a description of unity. But when you're saying all these other groups with Chuck Ramona, he's, he's very strongly in favour of this. We speak to him about it. We speak to people across the Labour Party. Actually, we're all in the Labour Party. We just want to change Labour Party policy. This isn't splitting up. This is actually doubling down and making sure that we're going to deliver for our members. Good luck. <laughs> Thank Colin you. Pope, Deputy Editor of Progress. Cheers. Many thanks indeed. The time is approaching 12 noon, as you can see. Um, you are listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Got a bunch of calls still waiting to talk about the education system. We, we may um, uh, have time to hear a couple more, but there are a couple of other things on the agenda. One of my pet subjects, I, 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 I know you're sick to death of me doing this, but I promise you I don't do it anywhere near as much as I could. Um, I told you so. Renting 
in the adult population of this country has now reached a, a scale previously unsuspected in this country and it impacts now on mental health and I want to talk about this from that specific perspective because the absence of security uh, knowing that you can stay there for a long long time is hurting people on your radio on your phone and here play LBC leading Britain's conversation this is LBC LBC